practicing my uh, social distancing street photography. So this is an old Novaflex 400mm lens and I found a cheap Vivitar adapter in one of my boxes of stuff, 2x adapter, uh, and then I mounted that onto the adapter for my Fuji, which is a 1.4 crop, so that makes this a really long lens. This thing shakes a lot. It's really starting to give me a headache. Oh, my neighbor's home. It's too close to read the license plate on my neighbor's car. She got the bag, Jeff. Is that skim milk? So hey guys and welcome back. I hope you all are staying safe and trying to stay busy during this whole weird quarantine thing that's going on. Uh, if you're new, uh, welcome to the channel. Please make sure you comment down below, say hi, like, subscribe. I'm getting ready to do some giveaways here pretty soon. Uh, so I would love to get y'all's feedback on that. Uh, just under the current circumstances, I think it might help maybe boost the mood a little bit. I don't know. I'm going back and forth between either cameras or prints. So if you have a preference or suggestion, uh, please leave that down below in the comments. And then I'll try and put that together in the next one to two videos, depending on what kind of feedback I get. So make sure you stay tuned and don't miss out on that. Also, if you're new on this channel, I mainly go over film photography, but also travel, videography, and just kind of whatever I feel like. But so now let's jump into the topic of today, which involves this little Rolly Flex here. It has the 80 millimeter planar 2.8 lens. Uh, this was a wedding gift to me, and I absolutely love this camera, as you can imagine. Now today's topic, I know I'm gonna get some hate for this, but after I state it, let me clarify as to why I'm doing this. Today, I'm gonna be developing C41 color film in black and white D76 developer. Now let me explain before everyone jumps on me and says it's a waste of your money. Obviously, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to develop color film in black and white chemicals because you could very easily just develop it in color chemicals and then if you want to, revert it to black and white in post, which is absolutely true. There's a few reasons why I decided to go ahead and do this uh, as kind of an experiment. First of all, uh, me and Jack went out the other day for our walk that we, you know, exercise our only time that we can escape the house. Uh, so we went down one of the main streets that's basically abandoned. And there were a few people out, which is kind of weird, but obviously we weren't there to go out, try and eat or engage with anybody, whatever, all that stuff. And I have been kind of documenting this whole process of just what's going on. So whenever I go to the store for groceries or when I have to go somewhere for work, I always have a camera on me uh, just because you never know what you're gonna see, uh, especially during this time. I think it's very important that we document what's going on because Later on in life when we're older or we have kids and things, we'll look back on this and it's gonna be a very weird thing to think about as far as what's going on. So I encourage you all, whether it's film, digital, whatever, to just kind of document what you can of what's going on. That being said, we went down the street and I wanted to take pictures of you know the closed restaurants and just locks on doors, empty streets, that kind of thing that are kind of just weird and eerie. So of course I wanna do that in black and white film. I had a roll of JCH400 in my Nikon One Touch, which we'll go over in a separate video. And then I had a roll of film in this guy, which I thought was black and white, but after finishing the roll, I discovered I was very wrong, and it was C41 color film. So since I had already gone out with the intention of using this roll of film in black and white, that was reason number one. Reason number two is there wasn't anything on this roll that I couldn't kind of shoot again. Uh, there's not really, unfortunately, anything that's gonna really change in that time frame and nothing that I wasn't overly ecstatic about as far as well, one shot that I know I won't get again uh, that I would be worried about ruining on that roll of film. And then lastly is I still do not have any color chemicals. They're not exactly cheap. Uh, yes, you can develop 14, 20, 30, whatever rolls uh, with those chemicals, but not shooting as much as I would like to right now under the circumstances. So I haven't really bought any of that. However, I do have plenty of black and white chemicals. And I've been shooting mainly black and white now uh, until I can get out of the house and do some other things. So now that you know the why, let's talk about the process. If you are new to developing film, I don't recommend you start out with this. It is not a difficult process from what I've researched, but there is a proper sequence and order to developing film for both black and white and color. And it takes several rolls for each one to kind of understand the process, how it works, read how your chemicals react to your film, understand the temperature differences. 
pushing, pulling film, uh, knowing which rolls of film work better under certain circumstances. Now, once you get the hang of it, developing film also not extremely difficult. So lots of people have actually done this. People still do this uh, with expired color film, things like that. Or if you just wanna experiment and try new things. The big thing that you're gonna notice from what I understand when developing color film in black and white chemicals, it's gonna be very punchy, very contrast. Your black's gonna be much blacker, your highlight's much brighter. The actual uh, filament on the color film is gonna be, of course, a yellowish tint. And then once you scan it in, you'll have to kind of correct that in post, invert it, and all those things like that. Now, there are many different ways that you can do this. Some people I have read will develop it in your D76 developer and then put the film into the Blix uh, for C41 color developer and then go through the rest of the process as if it were color film. But I don't have color film chemicals, which is the whole reason I'm doing it in D76 chemicals in the first place. I'm basically going to develop this in the same way that I have been kind of developing my normal black and white film. So I'll pull out all these stats here for you to see, and how it works is at, you know, whatever 20 degrees Celsius or whatever, something like that, it's about three and a half, four minutes. Uh, I'll have the correct times up here. But then of course you have to adjust for the temperature in your house if you're not going to correct the temperature of the chemicals. I am not, so really my is gonna be about seven and a half minutes. And so from what I've read, you actually wanna kinda of treat the color film as if you're pushing it to stop when you develop in black and white. The reason being is because C41 color film is meant to be developed in warm chemicals. I am developing in cold chemicals, so the time that it takes this film to react to chemicals is going to be longer. So I'm gonna be developing mine at about 12 and a half minutes. Other than that, I'm gonna develop it in the same way I do all of my black and white film. Final washed, a lot of people like to do it for a 10 minutes. I always end up doing it for about two minutes with some soap or a photo flow or whatever it is that kind of keeps your film from streaking. But two minutes has always been fine for me. If any of you think that the full 10 minutes is necessary, please comment down below and let me know why. And that is going to be the process for developing my role of color film in black and white chemicals. So uh, here we go. All right, so it's been a couple hours. I've developed the film, I let it dry, I wiped it down scanned it, uh, put it into the computer, and we're gonna show you those now. But first, I wanted to show you kind of a comparison. This is the 120 roll of C41 film that we just developed from the Rolly. Uh, I don't know if you can see that well, well at all, let's see. So you can see it's definitely got more of a yellowish tint to it than your normal black and white film. Now this, JCH 400 black and white film, which is also known for being very punchy and contrasty with its blacks and whites, same as the color film, but it is much more black and white and not anywhere near as yellow as the roll of C41. So now let's go into the computer and I will show you a little closer what it looks like. So I've gone ahead and opened Lightroom and these are the shots we got. I also included one shot from the Nikon One Touch uh, because I intentionally took one very similar to the Rolly just to kind of see how they compared to a similar punchy film like JCH 400. So here we are in Lightroom. I went ahead and converted them using Negative Lab Pro uh, and I decided to leave the negative and also the converted version so you can see the color difference, how it shifts, how it changed. So here's the first shot here. Uh, as you can see, very punchy, very contrasty uh, and converted. Here it is with the blacks and the whites. Uh, I actually really like how this looks. If color film wasn't so expensive, uh, I might do this more often. Now, if I were to go back and do this again, I think I might lower my develop time. Uh, that or maybe I would underexpose this a little bit or something. I, I'd have to play around with it because I lose a lot of the highlights, it seems like, because of that high punchy contrast. It could have also been the day, um, but so if I ever wanted to kind of retain that, I think I would have to kind of make some adjustments in order to do that. Uh, as I said, there were people shockingly all over the place, kind of hanging out, sitting down. Uh, so this is the one, guys, just the guy right there. This is the before, very yellow. The after, once I ran it through conversion. Uh, here's another one. And this one is kind of an example of the highlights that I was talking about. There's actually several people out there on that green area, kind of sitting down, laying down. Uh, and then you can see there in the bricks there, it just kind of, you lose all of it. Uh, there isn't much left there. I wonder if I can bring that back some. So if I pull the highlights all the way down, drop the whites, it's starting to come back a little bit. If I bring those up. Uh, but when you do that, it really kind of gets just washed out. I don't like that as much. So again, this is an example of where I would kind of want those highlights fixed. 
shockingly, the bar at the end of the street was open. Uh, of course, they have the six feet sign up there, which I think is interesting. Uh, they had two tables between the bartender and whoever's getting drinks. But I am really liking the contrast with these black and whites. Uh, and I do think it does kind of relate to a JCH 400 type of film. Obviously, it's much sharper because it's medium format and it's not as grainy. JCH, I think it's got really high contrast, but the lines, I think, tend to kind of fall off a bit. I could be very wrong. I've only shot two rolls and one was on the Nikon One Touch. I can't remember what the other one was on. Okay, so this is the shot from JCH 400 black and white film. Uh, this is before. As you can see, the film is a very blue color to it, whereas the C41 is very yellowish. Uh, I did have the same temperature setting on all these that I DSLR scanned. So this is straight out of the camera how it looks. I didn't adjust temperature for each individual shot or for each roll. I left it at the same for both just to kind of see how it compares. So let's go ahead and mark those and then mark these and I'll kind of put them side by side for you. And I believe this is a roll of Superior uh, 400 film. I'll have to double check on that and I'll make sure I post that. But again, very yellow, uh, same exact door as the roll of JCH 400. And then here is that shot, very blue, uh, very contrasty. And then there's the yellow. I also think the JCH is probably a thinner film compared to this color film. So I think that's probably why it's much brighter than the roll of color. Uh, I probably could have bumped up the exposure a little bit on the color to kind of match them up a little bit more, uh, but I kind of wanted to keep it as similar as I could. Now these are the two converted. So this is the roll of 120, of course. Uh, there's that door handle, the lock on it, everything. And then this is the roll from JCH 400. I do think that this is also out of focus, but it doesn't really affect the comparison. And so, yeah, that is the result of developing C41 color film in black and white chemicals. Uh, do I recommend doing this? Yes and no. I, I mean, if you have expired color film that you don't really want to put through expensive color chemicals, you can develop it in black and white chemicals. Or if you have a certain project or you want to experiment and kind of see how the contrast and color goes into it, you can of course do that as well. Could you kind of recreate that in post if you're scanning them like I did with a DSLR camera? Uh, yes, you could and kind of create the same effect. But again, if you don't have the money or don't want to spend the money right now on color chemicals, given the certain circumstances, you could do this if you got a lot of cheap color film. Will I be doing this all the time? Absolutely not. Color film is expensive and I want to develop it in color. But I think this is a good experiment. I hope you enjoyed it, liked it. Let me know, comment down below uh, what your thoughts are on this process. If you've tried it with different uh, times or different chemical combinations, uh, let me know if you have one that you think is best. Again, this is my first time doing it. But yeah, overall, I would say this is a successful experiment. And this is something I might actually do when I get rolls of film in cameras that I buy or something that I kind of want to develop just out of curiosity. So that's going to wrap it up for this video and I will see you in the next one.